Hi everybody, it's me Maddie and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hi. My name is Maddie and I post book related. Mm. Of course, I had the yawn during my intro. Hi everybody, it's me Maddie and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hi. My name is Maddie and I post bookish related content every single Monday. Yes, guys. You heard correctly. That is the uh, beginnings of an intro, and I'm very, very excited for it. So today, we are going to be doing a, another video in my end of 2020 wrap-up series, and today we're going to be talking about all the books I DNF'd in 2020. Now, these books, I will be explaining why I DNF'd them, but I will not be going into spoilers, or at least too detailed in the spoilers. I won't get into specifics. I don't think. I know one book that I might end up going on a rant on, but I won't be going into too many specifics and stuff like that. So yes. Um, these books I was very excited to read. I had very high hopes for, and some of them I put down because, um, a lot of them I put down because I was bored um, and I didn't care. But one of them I will pick back up again. There's only one on here that I would pick back up again, and there's a few possibilities, so yes. Anyway, let's get back into this. Alright, so let's talk about the books that I had on my Goodreads currently reading shelf for multiple months or a year. I had one on there for a year and I finally decided it was time to cut the cord. And the first one I have to talk about is On Writing by Stephen King. This is a memoir of Stephen King's life. The first half is about Stephen King's life and then the last half is about writing and gives writing tips. I did I do a little bit of bookmarking. I don't remember anything that I bookmarked, so uh, important? I don't think so. And basically, my English teacher in eighth grade had recommended this to me, and I was very intrigued because I do enjoy writing. Not currently, but I do enjoy writing, usually. And so I was very excited to read this book. But as soon as I started it, I was very, very bored. And the only time throughout this book I... And I enjoyed was when Stephen King was talking about his addictions because he suffered as an alcoholic and a drug user I believe and so I found those parts very entertaining but he didn't really go into specifics on them and I didn't understand that because most people don't want to talk about their addictions and if you want to know more about people's addictions you should read the nonfiction genre for that. I understand that. But I found that that was the only time I was really intrigued about this book was when he was talking or just like mentioning um, his addictions. And then we got into the writing tips and I just didn't find them very useful or descriptive. And I hadn't picked this book up since November like 18th of 2018. It had been uh, over a year and so I was finally like you know what you're never gonna finish it I know you're not gonna finish it okay so put it down people say this is like one of the best books to read for writing tips I don't agree okay because I got nothing out of this because I don't remember I don't remember a single thing all right so yes I finally decided to put this book down and then I also decided to put down the complete first edition of the Brothers Grimm's Folk Tales. Um, this book, I do, this is the, one of the books I definitely plan on picking back up again. I definitely want to read this entirely chunky book for its in, uh, entirety. I got to um, the 29th sh uh, fairy tale in here on page 92. So, hey, 29th fairy tale, page 92. That's kind of fun, isn't it? Uh, but yes, I did get to that um, fairy tale before I decided to put it down. I got this book because I wanted to read the original Rapunzel fairy tale. And I did end up reading that. But then I never picked it back up. The last time I remember Goodreads saying I had read this was like August 9th of 2019 or something along those lines. And so I do definitely want to pick this back up and read the entire fairy tales. Maybe not not all in one month, but maybe throughout a few months, but I decided that I'm not going to do it in 2020, and I was right. I did not do it in 2020. I also DNF'd The Star Spun Web by Sinine Odehart, and I DNF'd this book because I, I don't think I connected with the writing style. I found it, I don't know, like childish? This is a middle grade book, so I'm not surprised that the writing was childish, but I found this book 
I don't, I don't even remember, okay? This is about Tess who's an orphan and then like her uncle comes to pick her up but it's not actually her uncle and he's just using her and trying to get information out about something about her life. I don't really know, okay? But I deemed up this about page 109. I still have it dog-eared right there. And this is a book I might pick back up again. Maybe I will give this another try with my granny because this seems like something my granny would enjoy. And maybe if I was reading this with my granny, I would enjoy it a lot more. But when I was reading this on my own, I was just very bored and I had to force myself to read this book. And that's not something you want while reading. And you will see with a lot of these books that I had to physically force myself to continue reading. I also DNF'd The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. Now this was a five star prediction. I thought I was going to love this book. I thought it was going to make me cry. I just, I thought this was going to be everything I ever wanted. And it was for 215 pages. That, I know that because after page 215, everything went downhill. I remember specifically after page 215 thinking, what am I reading? What am I reading? What am I reading? So basically, for the first 215 pages, our main character, Rin, and this is the book I'm going to go into a little bit more specifics on, but I'm still not going to give away any, like, really big details. Um, but our main character, Rin, gets into this military academy, and she literally tortures herself to get into it. She burns herself with uh, fire, like candle wicks, you know, uh, to make sure she can stay awake and study. And I found that so fascinating because I loved it. Be I loved reading about her torturing herself because there was something about Rin being so focused on her schooling and, you know, being so studious that I connected with. Obviously, I would never physically harm myself to stay awake and make sure I got a good grade, but I just connected with Rin and her desperate want to be a good student, and I love that part about Rin. I loved the military academy school, and I loved all the characters that R.F. Kuang built up to wards. And then I hated the book, because after page 215, basically... This, the first 215 pages are building up towards a war. Now, a lot of people who have read this book and not liked it agree that this book would have been better if it was maybe like 300 pages. And this is an adult fantasy, by the way. Um, but if the, like, if this had been like the 300 page story where Rin is at the academy and it's building up towards a war. And then in the next book, the war had happened. And I think that would have worked so much better because this war happened. Happens, all right, and then R.F. Kuang throws away all the characters she had spent building for the first 215 pages. She takes them and throws them in the trash, just like she did My Love with the first part of this book, okay? And then she introduces all of these brand new characters, but she doesn't build them up. She just introduces them all at once, and I don't care about a single one of them, and they're I don't get a chance to fall in love with a single one of them because there isn't any relationship or any personality built upon them. They're all just they're all just military pawns in this war. And I did not like that at all. Another thing I didn't like about this book is I saw where it was going. So basically in this book, Rin has a opportunity to access these powers. And to access them, she has to get high. That's a cool concept, I guess. I mean, that's a cool concept because you get to, you could deal with the fact that, you know, I want this power, but I also don't want to harm and kill myself in this way to get this power. You can definitely do that in the correct way. But the way this went was Rin was so anxious and just so ready to be like, yeah, give me some pills. I want my powers, right? She was so readily open to using poppy, which is a drug, um, I think it's a drug in real life too, but in this book it's, it's, po it's Rin's drug, and to get her powers, so she was just so open to using poppy to get her powers when she knew the effects they would have because Rin's foster parents were drug dealers and she worked out of their little building where they sold all this poppy. So that's what really drove me off was the fact that Rin was so openly ready to accept this these poppies when she has seen the effects they cause and i do like reading about 
drug use and I do find it fascinating and I find it very 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 sad and in this book I just found it ridiculous and stupid the way Brynn was acting she tried so hard to build up a life with her and not be just a pawn in her parents game but then she was so ready to throw it all away to have this power and I just I couldn't get around the fact and see, I just, I can't get around the fact now that Rin, somebody who had grown up in an abusive household as um, like a little, like a messenger type thing for her foster parents' drug dealing business, she was just so openly ready to take drugs. And I just, I can't believe that she would be that type of person, especially after the first 215 pages where she's trying so hard to be a good student. And then she's like, ha I'm a good student, but... I want some of that poppy. I want some of that firepower. I just, I could not do it. And I really wanted to love this book. And I might come back to this book again. Maybe I'll give it another try. Because I want to love this book like everyone else does. I want to have this emotional connection to all of these characters. And I desperately want to love Rin and see ne the Nemza. Nemza. I don't know how it's spelled. Therefore, I don't remember even a correct way to try and pronounce the name. I want to go back and I want to see their haters to lovers romance because you know they are going to be a haters to lovers romance. I want to be able to experience the fan art for those two for this entire book. But at the moment, and I think possibly for the rest of my existence, okay, that's a little bit extra, I cannot skip behind the fact that she was just so openly ready to take Poppy. It makes me so mad. It's making me mad right now. I'm sorry, okay. Let's move on before I go back on a whole nother rant. And the second to last book I DNF this year was The Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackwith. Now, this book I had heard great things about, and my granny and I decided to buddy read this book. And I don't know what y'all on. Are y'all, are you friends with Rin? Are y'all getting some, like, poppy from her? Because this book is so boring. This book is so, 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 so boring. My granny and I got about 100 pages into it, and then we were just done. This book took all of my energy for the day in eight pages, and then I was done. I was pooped. I had to go take a nap because it was so much effort to read this book. Basically, my granny and I read about 50 pages of whatever book we are buddy reading a day. And so when we started this book off, we were like 42 pages of this book. Hopefully it's interesting. Hopefully it's entertaining. Let's go. The next day, we read 10, and then after that, we read 8, and then after that, we were like, <laughs> let's look for something else. Um, this book was just so incredibly boring, and I was interested in Claire and Lido. I think his name, oh yes, Lido. I was interested in Claire and Lido's story and how they got to where they are, because this, is a, this story takes place in hell and in the library in hell. Um, where all the books of the, all the unwritten books go. And I was very interested in how Leto and Claire got there. But I didn't care about the characters. I just cared about how they got there. I didn't care about the characters. I didn't care about the world. I was very, very bored. I cared more about myself than I did this book. And I finally, my granny and I were like, yo, we're done. We, are, we can't do it anymore. We physically cannot do it anymore. It takes so much effort to get through these books. So we finally put it down and it was one of the best decisions we've ever made. And then the final book I ended up DNFing in 2020 is the only graphic novel this year that I DNFed and that was Preludes and Nocturnes by Neil Gaiman. This is the first Sandman graphic novel and if you... No, you might not, but if you might also, you might not know, but you might know. I watched Arrow for the first time in May, and I have since watched the first season at least five plus times, and I've watched the second season at least three plus times, okay? I love the TV show Arrow, okay? Um, I just, I love, I love it, all right? So I've been wanting to get more in, I've, I've gotten more into the superhero world, you know, I've I've watched all of the Marvel movies. They are not all good. Infinity War and Endgame are two of the most boring movies I've ever seen. You know, they come before Ant-Man on the boring scale. Unpopular opinion, I know, but I just want to put it out there, okay? Um, and so I wanted to get more into the DC world specifically because I didn't know much about it. And I've also just become very fascinated with the superhero culture. 
This is a DC graphic novel on the Sandman. I don't know if he's a villain or if he's just like a misunderstood protagonist. Um, well, protagonists can't be villains, but you know what I mean. I don't know what this is about because I've read the description of this book five times while physically reading the book on my Kindle and I still didn't know what was happening. I don't remember a single thing about it except the fact that I was so confused. Use. I was so confused. Like every time I read the description, I would go back and like read a few panels and then I was like, I don't know what happened and I don't know what, I don't know who these characters are. Like there was something that would happen here and then it would go 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 here and then like it was just, it was just a tangle of plot points and I was so kind of Use. I had no idea what was happening. I didn't even know who Sandman was. I was like, what's his power? Like, these people are, like, waking up. Like, they all went into sleep, and then they woke up. Like, is that his power? Like, I, did, I didn't know if we... I, I got, like, 25 pages into this. Like, 25 to 32 pages into this graphic novel. So I didn't get far, okay? Because it's, like, only 230 pages. But I was so, so confused. I was just... Nothing made sense. Nothing made sense. Anyway, guys, it's going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe down below because I have videos on this channel every single Monday. If you have any videos you would like to see on my channel, please comment them down below because I consider every single video suggestion. So far, I've gotten three viewer requested videos and I have done all three of those uh, videos that the viewers requested. So, if you have any videos you would like to request, Comment them down below because there's a very, very high chance I will do them. What is one book that you DNF this year? I have, I, I already told you all mine. So what, give me one book you DNF this year. I'm very curious to know. And yes, I'm going to go. I love you all so very much. And I'm going to see you all next Monday for another video in my end of 2020 video wrap up. <laughs> all right, everybody. Bye, guys. And hey, don't forget, I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye.